Hello and welcome to Bionic Heart. This game is, or well, I suppose you know what I should say, is set in the year 2099 and fortunately due to climate change, the earth now is, has permanent rain, which sounds very bleak and probably would get flooded a lot. But yeah, you play as a character named Luke, who is a programmer at one of the big nanotechnology research company and his life changes better or for worse when he encounters a lady named Tanya but yeah with that we will start a new game prologue London 80-2099 London is nice in the summer isn't it no, I'm not joking. It's really summer. July, to be more accurate. I still remember some of the stories that my father used to tell me about global warming, and the warnings sent out by some groups of scientists in the 21st century. But those who ruled the world were too busy fighting each other and too greedy to listen, so they ignored the menace. When they finally realized what was really happening, it was too late and the balance of the earth became unstable. Luckily, or maybe unfortunately, the forecasts weren't totally accurate. There wasn't a desertification, but the melting of the ice caps acted on the polarization of the planet and caused a sort of permanent disturbance on a large portion of the earth's surface. In a nutshell, it rains almost always, almost everywhere. The planet's energy now comes from several probes equipped with solar panels that orbit around the Earth, beyond the clouds. But I didn't introduce myself. My name is Luke Black, bioinformatics engineer, 35 years old. I work at Nanotech, one of the largest companies in the world for the production of nanotechnology. Modestly, I'm quite skilled in my job. I surely don't miss money and... Do you see those lit flats? I mean, yeah, I do. The one in the center is mine. Beautiful, isn't it? I mean, sure. <laughs> there I am, inside it, looking outside of the windows. Once we were watching the sky and the stars, but now the only lights we can see are those of the artificial city. I mean, that's for m most cities, and fortunately with light pollution in most cities, you don't get to see the stars, so... It's a fascinating spectacle, nevertheless, even if it's rather gloomy. Do not pretend not to hear me. Uh, who are you? Hey, Luke, are you here? I guess. Oh, well, hello there. Helen Hughes. Helen, my current partner. Even if I don't know for how much longer. She's only three years younger than me, and we've been engaged for ten years already. She runs a clothing store in town. Nothing special. But she's good at selling things to people. Yeah, she's definitely got, uh... Clothing, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, definitely got a strange attire here in the future, but I won't judge. So? We're just in the middle of a big fight. Seems like yesterday that we had our first kiss. Oof, ten years and you only just had your first kiss? Uh, sorry, I was a million miles away. What have you decided? Don't you think that ten years of engagement should be enough? Come on, you know what my thoughts are on this. I really don't want to get married. Think about it. In the last 50 years, only one couple out of ten gets married. There has to be a reason, don't you agree? We aren't the others, and you know what I think about this subject too. So make up your mind. Either we marry or we break up. I don't know what to do. We meet often, but we don't live together. I don't know how it could be. Okay. <clears throat> okay, we're actually getting choices now. But yeah, I'm definitely surprised with how much voice acting there is. Definitely gives me a break from reading all this. It gives you a break from having to hear my awful voice acting as well. Anyway, um... 
Uh, do we want to take some time or suggest probation? Uh, I guess this, because taking our time, yeah, well, I mean, we've been together for 10 years, so what's the point in taking our time <laughs> when we've already been taking our time? I, uh, listen, I think we should try to live together for a while first. Live together? Yes, before we get married. Why? Do you think it's a bad idea? Maybe you're right, but are you sure? You aren't joking, I hope. No, I'm sure. Really? I really want to try, I swear. All right, we'll talk about this tomorrow evening. Now I have to go. Tomorrow I start work early. Oh, yay! We uh, leveled up her thing in the right way, too. Okay, so yay. She says goodbye, kissing me passionately on the lips. Damn. I have to relax before going to bed. Tomorrow I have to work. Let's see if my friend Tom wants to come here tonight. Okay, that's the prologue done, so at least gives us a bit of uh lore. And meanwhile on the other side of town. Okay, we got Richard. You're sorry? I should destroy you all for what you've done. His voice is about as I expected for a face like that. If that's your desire, sir, we're ready to self destruct. Shut up, stupid scraps. Always taking every single word I say seriously. I mean, they're robots after all. How could she escape? How many of you were after her? Four of us find her at the laboratory at the exit. Four. And you weren't able to stop her? Does it look like she's here? We tried hard. She has that injury, but she managed to run away. Wow. Prototype 9 works really well then. This new technology is really great. Okay, you pretty much taking this in stride. Definitely outstanding. Good. I mean, bad. Seek her out and bring her back here. Immediately, sir. Stupid robots. They'll never find her. Dr. Mark has done a superlative job. Okay, APM looks flat. Oh, and this is our friend Tom. Come on, I can't believe it. What can't you believe? You living together with her. Ah, but why? What's so strange about it? You ask? I know you well. In the office, you always talk down about married couples. People change their minds. Yes, but not you. You're the most stubborn person I know. Mm, yeah, true. You have a point. Did she give you some sort of ultimatum? I mean, yeah. What the hell are you talking about? It's a classic, man. You are still lucky. She could have decided to go with plan B. What? And that is... What, go with you? To accidentally get pregnant. Oh, that. Yeah. Baby trapping someone is not always good. Oh, shut up. I don't know what kind of women you hang out with, but... And anyway, she doesn't want a child. I wouldn't be so sure. As you just said, people change their minds. And she isn't as stubborn as you. You know, you would be a great lawyer. You manage to twist people's arguments like no other. Hey, what time is it? The virtual boxing match is about to begin. Let's take our seats in the living room, quick! Okay, alright, let's go. At least I'll amuse myself and not think about it for a while. Yeah, that's one way to quickly change the subject. Okay, outskirts of London. I must... find a place to hide. There, there she is. Okay, yeah, that must be the uh, experiment that ran off. She's heading to the city. Remember, no excessive damage to the prototype. 
Okay, well, <laughs> that was a quick interaction. Back to looks flat. What a great fight. Hey, Luke. Yeah, not bad, really. Even if it was quite clear that Mike would have won. You think? It was an unpredictable fight for me. What are you saying? Didn't you see what happened in the second round? Shit. Now he'll start talking for hours. And I'm so tired now. I mean, we personally didn't get to see it. Well, they probably for the best, guys. Not really into the whole fighting thing. And when he used that takedown technique, perfectly executed, wasn't it? I don't really care. Go home. Uh, yes, as you said. Bonk. What was that? I don't know. It was from the outside. I'll go and take a look. I get close to the entrance door and I check the entrance monitor. Nothing wrong. What do you find? Nothing. Everything seems to be all right. And if there was someone, the alarm would have been triggered, no? Ha, <laughs> of course. Your super alarm. Exactly. Nobody can pass unnoticed with it. You sure about that? I'm gonna go in the kitchen to eat a snack. But when I get back, we can continue discussing the fight, okay? And no thanks. Besides, with technology, there's always a way around it. No matter how hard you try to make sure that nobody can, and behind all the procedures and security and whatnot. Uh, yes, uh, I'm looking forward to it. A bit of peace at last. Open, please. Oh, hello. Huh? Who's there? I don't want to destroy your door. It seems valuable. A female voice coming from outside. I wonder how it's possible that my alarm system didn't see her coming. I mean, if it's set to only humans, then... Yeah, that might be why. What the hell are you saying? Do as I say, or in five seconds your door will be smashed open. Uh, yeah, let's open the door. Alright, alright. I'm opening the door. But be warned, I'm armed. Killing you isn't my priority right now. What? Now I suppose I should be more relaxed about this? Ah! What? Shut up. But who... What are you? A robot? There's someone else in here besides you. Yeah, Tom. He's in the kitchen, but... Hey, Luke! Uh, no. Tom's voice. He's in the living room. He's coming here. Uh-oh. Is everything alright? I heard you talking. Uh, yeah, just talking to myself. You know how I am. Tom, I... What's up? You look scared. I turned around and she was gone. Maybe... I had a hallucination? Luke, is everything alright? You look weird. Yes, uh... It's better if I go to bed now. I'm really tired. Sure. I have to go too. If you need any help, you know where to find me. Thanks. Bye. Good night. He left. But... That thing... Where is she? The less people know about me, the better it is. Her voice. It's coming from the bedroom. <laughs> of course she's in but the bedroom. your face... Oh, she's no one else. Yay. The self so scary looking. tissue system does wonders. Isn't it true? Who... What are you? Regarding your first question, you can call me Tanya. About the second, it's really too hard to explain. Well, we're gonna be here all night, so might as well start Tanya. talking. Huh? Yes, you know, I don't like being called Prototype 9. Not really a cool name, indeed. But what exactly are you? Alright, I see then. Why are you here? You're getting excited? Hey, yo. What are you talking about? What? Why are you asking me that now? Sorry, but I can catch various signals from your body that's just a state of excitement. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean... Uh, I mean... Well, of course. It's normal to be excited looking at such a beautiful being like you. I mean, I know you're not a real woman, but still. Hey, we're to yes, neutral. My creator had lots of fun playing with me. Of course he did. 
Of course, it's that type of sleaze. Lots of fun? What do you mean? Oh, not in that way. I meant he had lots of fun modeling me, shaping my body. Ah, uh, yes, uh, of course. How stupid I am, thinking otherwise. Is it going to turn into that, like that movie Mannequin? It's going to be weird, so. Now listen carefully. I need to stay hidden here for some time. Huh? What? You don't need to know more. Why not? Seeing as you're staying in my room, I think I deserve to know at least a little bit more than that. What? Keep your usual life. Pretend that I am not here. Well, I mean, that's kind of hard to do so, but, you know. Uh, yes, it'll be easy. Not that she's an ugly presence. Rather the opposite. I think I'll get used to seeing her around rather quickly. Gainer switches into interactive mode. You'll see two panels below. Left one shows the possible actions for the current location. The right one allows you to move to other known places. To advance in the game plot, you'll need to talk to characters and interact with the environment. New game locations will be added later based on your actions or on the story. Good luck. Well, thank you. Okay, so, uh, we actually get to uh, do some interactions. My bedroom is exceptional. A full latex bed with self-balancing sensors lets me sleep very easily. Besides that, there's a huge wardrobe on the wall and a small nightstand on the side of the bed. Okay, uh, then that unlocks these two then. Nothing special. My wardrobe is spacious, even if more than half of the clothes aren't mine, but Helen's. <laughs> Not really surprising there. I see a woman frequents this flat. No, uh, it's just my. It's what I do in my spare time. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Helen, my girlfriend. Tanya remains silent, but looks at me, smiling. Seems like she's reading my mind about what I think of Helen right now. It is probably not a lot of good things. Inside the top drawer of the nightstand, there's my Phaser 3000. My personal defense gun. With it, I can melt any kind of metal. If I decide to do anything with it, I must be very careful. She's been keeping an eye on me, even if I don't think she noticed the pistol. Hmm, yeah. That will have been a robot, she'd have way quicker reflexes than I would, so... Hmm. Do we really want to take it, or...? Hmm. I'll take it anyway. Take the gun in my hand. If you're thinking about eliminating me with that gun, you may as well save your efforts. Oops. She's coming nearby in a menacing way. Yeah, I don't think shoot her will uh, please her anyway, and probably end very badly for me. So, relax. I was just taking precautions. As I told you already, if you're thinking about it, whoever's after you sooner or later will get here, right? No, I don't think so. I'm very good at hiding my traces. Well, I don't care. If you're in danger, I want to help you any way I can. You mean defend me with that gun? Absolutely. I have a good aim. I mean, if I'm going to be in control of the shooting, then <laughs> absolutely not. But if the, you're going to be in control of it, then yeah, I, I'll take your word for it. This is really nice of you. Thanks. Even if I think I won't need your help. Yay, it went up a little bit. Hell yeah. Okay, dodged a bullet there. Cool. No, like quite literally. I must try to get her to talk, to obtain more information about her. I want to know more. Yes, what do you want? Okay, let's start from the top. I... I don't understand. I work for Nanotech. Ah, interesting. Yes, I'm an expert in technology, but... You... you're something unique. Not just a robot. What exactly are you? 
You can't be a robot. Such perfect technology isn't available yet. Oh, thank you for the compliment. But... Ah, oh, damn it. You're not gonna answer my questions, right? Yes, you got it. Keep living your life like I'm not here. When you entered here, you had half of your face destroyed. Now I'm all okay, right? Yes, but you were injured by someone or something. What's your guess? Ugh, I understand. You don't want to tell me anything. Right. <laughs> Listen, could you leave me alone? I thought you liked my company. Oh, and now she looks sad. Yes, but I just want to try and sleep. Ah, uh, yes. Sleep. I see. I'll stay in the living room then. Thanks. Good night. Good okay, night. Okay, well, bye-bye. <sighs> okay, well, I still want to go uh, out and explore a little bit before we... Yeah, hi. Don't mind me, I'm just not quite going to uh, bed yet. My flat entrance hall. An anti-intrusion armored door with a keypad on the side. Equipped with a retina scan and voice recognition. The top technology. Tanya follows me everywhere. I'm a bit worried about this. Well, me, we did just uh, tell her to come out here, so... I stepped close to the exit door, silently. Where do you think to go? Going? Not really. I was just checking that those boots that injured your face weren't outside the flat. I don't need your protection. Okay, got it. Now, try to get some sleep. What if I'm doing it for my protection? Because I don't doubt that you can protect yourself, but what about me? <laughs> Is it necessary to follow me, even inside here? Ah, uh, you must... Yes, us humans from time to time must fulfill our physiological needs, to put it with kind words. I know. I think I'll wait outside then. Thank you. Tanya leaves me alone in the bathroom. She probably noticed I can't go anywhere from here, since there are no other exits nor windows. I mean, unless she wants to, like, help me, I won't mind help. Needing help in the shower, I guess. A small but nice bathroom. There's room for a modern hydro shower with various programs. A mirror linked to my media center so I can read emails and browse the internet in the morning while I shave my beard. And a normal toilet. On the side of the sink, there's a small scaffolding where I store my medicine. I don't have many medicines. I think there are even some sleeping pills somewhere. Ha, ah, here they are but they need to be taken after eating. Huh, okay, well, uh, let's try taking a shower. You need to cool no, off. Not really. It isn't the right moment to do that. When is the right moment? Okay, well, back out into the entrance. Yeah, hi, um, okay, let's go to the kitchen then. Meow? Wait, you have a kitty? Oh, fella. Oh my god, look at you! You're so fluffy and so cute! Othello, my cat. The kitchen is his favorite room in the house. He's always in here, all day. Surely he doesn't lack an appetite. <laughs> As most cats do, but why didn't you start off by saying you had a cat? <gasps> look at him, he's so cute and adorable. Meow, you bet. Unless I could run freely through the fields and woods, but now, with all this rain, I don't even want to go out. A cat. Yes, yeah, a kitty yes, cat! exactly. A real one. With those ridiculous robot imitations. Oops, maybe I should think twice before talking badly about robots. It was very expensive. Real cats are very rare nowadays. Well said. A very precious cat. I suppose... It's the first time you've seen one, right? No, I have seen far too many of them. Why do I have a bad feeling about that? What? Don't even try to harm him, okay? She smiles at me in a strange way. 
almost like she was feeling pity towards me. Fear not. I'm not a human. She gets down and pets the cat, who seems scared at first, but then relaxes and starts to behave as usual, as a perfect ruffian. You're a lucky cat. Me? Indeed, modestly. I can't complain about my life. But what are you doing now? Crying? She's crying. Huh. Look at that. A crying robot? I... I've seen so many innocent cats being tortured to death in the laboratory for your useless and stupid studies. And I identify myself with them every time I see one. And in many other innocent little animals. Okay, where are these people and... How many are there so I can stop shooting them? Huh. I see. The laboratory. It's the place where they built, uh, <clears throat> created you? This is not your concern. Oh, it is absolutely my concern if they're torturing poor animals. She probably realized she already said too much. Anyway, it's really astonishing. The tears were really realistic. <gasps> I get to pet the kitty! You pet Othello and he starts to purr. It's quite relaxing, but probably not enough to make you feel sleepy. Oh, gotta pet him again, yes. You pet Othello and he starts to purr. Yay. Tanya never leaves me alone, not even for a second. What the hell? Yeah. Okay, uh, let's have a snack. You decide to have a snack. You select chocolate mousse with cream. Ooh, that sounds nice. Well, nowadays you can find the real food only in luxurious restaurants or in specific shops. The lack of sunlight made it practically impossible to cultivate groceries on a large scale. And 90% of the population is vegetarian, because it's basically impossible to raise livestock without grain and other cereals. So, now we usually eat moose with various flavors. Disgusting. Tastes good? Uh, honestly not. I mean, apparently the taste is similar, but real chocolate is really another thing. Tanya observes me with a curious face. It's fun to see someone looking at me so carefully while I do a normal thing like eating. Hmm, okay. Uh, let's talk to her again. I must try to get her to talk. To obtain more information about her. I want to know more. Yes. What do you want? Okay, and it's just the usual other questions. I... I don't understand. Ah. Yes, I'm an... You... You can't be a robot. Oh, thank you. But... Yes. Wasted time. She won't tell me anything. A long night awaits me. Okay, let's go to the living room then. Hey, can you sleep on the couch if I want to? Let's see if I can manage to relax and calm myself after all those emotions. You zap through several channels. Until finally, you find a cool documentary about the 21st century, entitled The Age of Mass Self-Destruction. Tanya seems to watch it with interest, but remains silent. Hmm, okay. My living room is huge. At the center, there's a long couch, and in front of it there's a small table with my media center for all the interactive activities I need. The outside view from the windows isn't particularly interesting, since it's always the same. Listen, Tanya, I wanted to ask you. Yes, what do you...
I only just noticed this uh, interesting painting above the bed. Anyway, um, we're going to sleep now. I can't sleep. I'm still too excited. I must relax. Oh, okay, I guess not. Tanya is here. She says nothing, but she observes me. No, impossible. I have trouble sleeping in my super comfortable bed right now. I can't imagine trying here. Okay, uh, I can't even do that, so... Hmm. My living room is huge. At the center, there's a long couch. And in front of it... Listen, Tanya. Yes? What... You flip through the channels hoping to find some more interesting stuff, but it's too late and there's nothing good on it. You then try to find that old puzzle dating sim video game that you found in your uncle's archives, Azada Romance. Okay, that's uh, good to know that you still got uh, those types of games around. Tanya never leaves me alone, not even for a second. Yep, I realized that. Stop. I'm too tired. I must go to bed now. Okay, now I can go to bed. Okay, let's go back to the bedroom. And now we can go to bed. <laughs> Man, I wish I could go to sleep that quickly. Okay, and on to chapter two, dreams. Someone in the virtual Kingsington Gardens. I'm pissed off. Okay, that's one hell of an entrance, Tina. You'd rather be outside of the permanent rain? And this is Robert. Inside here, it's too quiet. Nothing ever happens. Obviously, since everyone that enters the virtual gardens has checked and scanned for any weapons. Surely it's amazing if you think about it. I mean, this is just an illusion. For just a few centuries ago, Earth really looked like this. What a nice talk. You become a romantic man, Robbie. You're flirting with me? It would be about time. It's been six months that we're working together. Stop it. You know that I'm engaged. Oh, I was about to say, quick, let's just go find a bush to hide behind and do a quickie. Yes, yes. That's what my last boyfriend was saying, too. It's time to go back. Prepa to all units, security code one. A dangerous criminal has infiltrated the residential district of London. Maximum alert. You were saying, Tina, nothing ever happens? Oh, well, she definitely got a wish. Let's look around. Even if it won't be easy to spot her in the middle of this crowd anyway. I mean, what crowd? <laughs> spot her? We didn't even get a mugshot of the criminal. True. That's strange. Let's take a look around anyway, just in case. Yeah, I get the feeling you're not going to be able to find her there. Anyway, back onto Luke's flat. <sighs> I had a really peaceful sleep. But where is she? Was it a dream? I can't see her around here. Oh, don't worry. I'm sure she'll pop up somewhere. Luke, you're still in bed. You need to go to work. Her voice. It's coming from the lounge. She's a very dangerous criminal. Unfortunately, the police weren't able to provide us with an identity kit yet. I always knew that one day I'd become famous and they would speak about me on the television news. Journalists exaggerating as usual. Very dangerous. Politicians and their lies do more damage than me, to be honest. You do have a point there. Uh, 
I agree with you on that, but... You want to know if I have intentions of killing you? I've already said no. I mean, you could have easily killed me in my sleep, so... Go to work now. Nobody must get suspicious. Okay, let's go to work then. Alright then. I'm going. Have a nice day. I'll wait here. Uh, yes, well... Bye. And don't let my girlfriend see you, cause... Uh, she won't be too happy about me having another woman in here. But yeah, anyway, to Luke's office. Damn, I'm really doing a lame job today. I just can't concentrate. Mm, too much pent-up frustration? Luke, what the hell are you doing? I'm getting lots of errors from your program down in the data center. I'm sorry, Tom. I slept badly. I see. This has to do with what's happening between you and Helen, right? No. I mean, yes. Are you sure you're alright? Yes, I told you. I just slept badly, that's all. Let's do this. In an hour, I'll be back. And then we can go to the park together during lunch break. Then maybe you'll cheer yourself up. There are always such gorgeous babes jogging there that... Yes, yes, I understand. Now leave. Uh, sorry. See you in an hour. Damn. I must try to remain calm. Otherwise, other people could get suspicious. Huh? The darkness. Huh, that's not good. What's going on? Is there a power failure? Hi, sweetie. Uh, hi. Tanya! What are you doing here in my office? I want to stay with you. Oh. Okay, this escalated quickly. Stop it. You're scaring me. It's our fate. Nothing will ever divide us. It kind of makes me uncomfortable with uh, how quickly your behavior has changed. I. Uh... Tell me you love me. But I'm engaged to Helen. Come on, tell me. Tanya, I. Who's Tanya? Ah! What the? Hey, you were sleeping. It's all right. If the boss didn't catch you, I mean. In that case. I suggest you start looking for a new job already. It was a dream. Thank God. But somehow I think that Tanya isn't a dream, but a real woman. Am I right, Luke? Yeah, just walk off about it. It's time. Let's go out and eat something in the park. Come on, move! Okay, let's go with Tom. I'm coming. Give me a minute. Okay, virtual kings and guns. Why do I have a bad feeling about this? So, what was I telling you? Huh? Haven't you seen what hot girls there are around here? Oh, sorry. My mind was elsewhere. I don't know, you're weird. This is the best place in town to feast your eyes on. And you're standing there, totally spaced out. Look at that one. Stop it. Let's go back to work. I don't want to be late. Oh, we just arrived! I'm going back. Alright, I'm coming as well. But, only so I can take a closer look at that blonde over there. The one that stopped drinking at the fountain. Which blonde? The one right there, you see? What a babe! Hey, wait a moment! You just asked me which blonde! A amazing! I can't believe it! Seems like your interest in women is starting to wake up again! Hell yeah! <laughs> shut up, you idiot! Look at what a butt she's got. Absolutely perfect. Luke? Tom? Oh, hi there. Oops. Hi, Helen. I was just telling Luke here that I find you in perfect shape. Thank you, Tom. What are you doing here? I could ask you the same question. I've told you countless times that I often go jogging here at the park around midday. But of course, you never listen when I speak. Hey guys, take it easy. You don't want to start a fight here in the park again. This is none of your business. I I think I'll go ahead. 
See you later in the office, Luke. Bye, Helen. Bye, Tom. Yeah, thanks for ditching me, Tom. Helen. Yes? She draws near me in a menacing way. I really have to admit, though, she's really cute dressed this way. I don't understand why she's angry at me. She should be happy after our last talk yesterday evening. Uh, I mean... Uh, let's praise her. I don't think asking what's wrong with her is gonna improve things. You are beautiful. Hey, we did it. Thanks. I must go back to the office now. So, see you this evening? You know, we have to plan my move. Um... What's up? Yes, yeah, sure. I'll give you a call and we'll surely arrange something. She comes closer and kisses me softly on the lips. The sweet sweat on her skin is like a perfume that irresistibly attracts me. How to use the hollow map? It's a map that you can use to move quickly from lo one location to another. Locations available depends on specific points of the game's plot. The game progresses, new places will be added and odd ones will be removed from the hollow map. Huh, okay, interesting. Um, it's also, uh, the story also gives me uh, Catherine vibes as well. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, hmm. I mean, we could go back to the office, but do we want to go to the police station or go back to our flat? Kind of tempted yes. to check this place out. How can I help you? Oh, we can report Tanya if we wanted to. Yeah, we uh, won't uh, do that. Nothing. Excuse me, I made a mistake. Have a nice day. All the crazy ones come to me. Yeah, that's it. I'm just totally crazy. What the hell are you doing here? I mean, I just wanted to come see you. But it's my home. I know, but now you should be at the office. It's break time. You've never gone home during a lunch break in your life. How the hell do you know that? And how do you know that? There is no time. Now go back to the office immediately. Or go to the park. As long as you get out of here. Okay. Okay, fine. My office. From here, I write most of the code for the new nanotech prototypes. I'm the lead programmer of the whole department, so I have huge responsibilities. I certainly can't make too many errors. Like I was just doing before. I really needed a break. Now I can work better. I'm not doing my best, but for sure I'll make less mistakes than I did this morning. Okay, well... Hmm. I can't leave work now. I don't have fixed working hours as the area manager, but despite that fact, I've never left before lunch break. I have to try to behave normally. Yeah. Damn it. Today, time never passes. Anyways, better keep on working as usual. Okay, I guess I just keep on click on work. I'm finished for today. But now, what do I do? Uh, finally, work was that easy. Usually, I'd go back home. But I'm not sure it's a good idea to go back to Tanya. Maybe I could ask Tom to go have a drink in some pub. Hmm. Now, do I want... Oh, I don't get a choice anyway. Um, I mean... Hmm. Sure, let's go, Tom. Hi, Luke. Hi, Tom. How's it going with work? Oh, enough talking about work. I can't stand it anymore. Today was a really dull day. Yeah, I agree. I have an idea. What do you think about going for drinks at the usual pub nearby? All right, I finished my tasks already. See you at the Golden Circus then. Go ahead. I'll be there in a few minutes. Okay, I'll order drinks in the meanwhile. See you later. Okay, to the Golden Circus pub. Tom and I have been coming here for five years now. At the beginning, we only came on Fridays. But recently, we stop here more frequently to drown our troubles in alcohol. Finally, I'm done. I ordered your usual beer. Thanks. Tell me, is everything alright? 
Do you want to talk to me about anything special? What do you mean? Uh, probably not right now, but... I don't know. You and Helen, for example? Today at the park, it seemed like there was some tension between you. <laughs> don't mind his own business. Uh, yeah, we don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Um, this is not a good sign. Am I not allowed to have secrets? You never had any with me. Yes, this is true. Uh, let's change the topic. So tomorrow is the virtual boxing final. Yes, that's true. I'll come to your place to watch it. Uh, no, better not. But why? Nothing. Okay, well, I guess I gotta tell him to mind his own business. Listen, it's none of your business. But why? You've always asked me for help with this kind of thing. No, to tell the truth, it was you who gave me unsolicited advice. Okay, then. Are you sure you don't want to talk about it? Eh, uh, no. Uh, we can ask about him and Helen. What do you want to tell me about Helen? Uh, what do you mean? What do you think about her? But, you know my opinion well already. I told you more than once that I think she's really hot and... You like her, right? Would you like to be with her? But, what kind of questions are you asking, Luke? Are you nuts? You didn't answer. I noticed some tension on Tom's face, even if he tries his best to control his emotions. She's very beautiful, but I don't think I could stay with her. She has one really big flaw. What's that? And what is it? She's my best friend's girlfriend. Ooh, awesome thing with him. It's hmm. late. I have to go back home. See you tomorrow. Okay, bye. Tom, I... He went away, angry as hell. I wonder if it's due to the fact that I doubted him, or because he feels guilty. Well, the night started in a really bad way. Fighting with my best friend. I wonder what's in store for me now. We still gotta deal with our girlfriend and her moving in with us, so... 7 o'clock p.m. in the London streets. Huh. Here I am, walking in the perennial rain. Maybe I should just go back home. But what'll I do then? What if Tom decides to come see me? Or even worse. When will Helen call to meet up? Tanya is there waiting for me, for sure. And I can't keep her hidden forever. Damn it. What can I do? Hmm, so, got three places to go, or well, not gonna go to the police station, because that means I need to turn Tanya in, but who do we choose between? Uh, I think we should go with Helena first, just to get her out of the way. Helen isn't home. Wonder where she is. Even her mobile phone is off. But this doesn't surprise me. She's always been against new technologies. Uh oh. Alright, let's go back to our flat I then. I arrive home. It's strange. I'm worried, but at the same time, curious to see if Tanya is still there. Tanya? Seems like there's nobody here. Maybe she went away? No, I'm in the bathroom. But. Can you read my mind now? Hey, you haven't noticed already? Wow. Uh, whoa, uh, hi. Um, I didn't see anything. I'm not looking. But what? How dare you enter? I didn't realize you were taking a shower. What? Well, get changed. I was just looking. Besides, you are a robot. I'm not talking about that, but about what you're thinking. Then it's true. You can read my mind. Get out immediately. But... No. Okay, I fine. I go out before she gets too angry. I must not let her exterior appearance fool me. As much as I know, she could even be some kind of killer robot. Even if... Wow, what a body. <laughs> I can't literally read your mind. But I can understand all the signals that you humans send unintentionally. And guess with good precision your feelings or general thoughts. Ah. Uh. I see. Uh, then even when I saw you before... 
For that, it was enough looking below your belt. But... <laughs> yes, exactly like that. Uh, and who is it now? Damn it, Helen! What do I do now? Unfortunately, I gave her the access credentials to my home, so she can enter my house without me having to open the door. Hi, love. Uh, hi. I wanted to surprise you, and I see that I managed it. You look astonished. Well, things are about to get awkward. Uh, uh, hi, Helen. Are you okay? You seem strange. Ah, uh, that's the tractor. Oh, Luke. You haven't kissed me like that for a while. Hell yeah, very I good. I am happy to see you. But I didn't expect you to come so early. I know. You're right. I'm early, but I bought some natural food, and now I want to prepare a nice dinner. You can't refuse. I'm going well, to the go kitchen. Stop. Join me as soon as you're ready. Don't think you could sneak away as usual. This time, you're going to help me. Okay, well... Hi. Well, what are you doing in here? Uh, my girlfriend's here, so you might want to, like, hide. Helen has arrived. I know, I heard it. What do we do now? I don't want her to see you. Don't worry. I don't want to see her either. It would be a problem. I'd have to make her keep her mouth shut. When she acts like that, she really scares me. Okay then. I'll go in the kitchen to help her. But in the meantime, you go hide somewhere. Okay. I will hide in the bedroom. Go now. Don't make her wait. Okay, well... Tanya... Why are you still here? I need to finish drying my hair. I have very long hair. Yeah, I've noticed. What? We need to hurry and you think about blow drying your hair? You idiot. Do you want me to leave tracks on the floor? Uh, you are right. Luke, are you still in the bathroom? No, I'm coming immediately. Okay, well, um... No, I have to think about what to do. I can't go far. What if Helen comes here to use the bathroom? Uh, that was a po good point, so let's go out to the kitchen. Okay. Now take that hack of Kitty again! I want to pet the kitty. The fellow who promptly starts purring. Don't touch the cat or the food will get full of hair. Ugh. Okay, sorry, okay. sorry. Okay, let's help Helen. Help Helen prepare spaghetti with smoked salmon and a sauce made of eggs and cream. Looks great. I have to admit, she is one of the few people who can still cook like they did in the 21st century. Helen, all this stuff must have cost you a fortune. Yes, indeed. But you shouldn't have bought it. I did it for us. It's not wasted money. So please, don't start calculating how much this normal dinner will cost us. Helen. Yes? Uh, yeah, let's not talk about the expenses. I love you. Me too, despite of everything. Yay! We sit at the table and have this delicious food. It really is no comparison with those junky foams I have to eat every day. Even if I don't want to think about how much Helen spent buying all the ingredients. After we finish having dinner, we go to the living room to watch a bit of TV. The night is going well. It's really strange. I haven't felt this type of connection with her for a long time. That's because I'm in charge, so... Yeah, let's kiss her. I slowly start to kiss Helen. First on her neck, then near her ear. She doesn't say anything, but she smiles at me. Then, in a second, we find ourselves hugging each other. It's marvelous. Luke, how about going to the bedroom? I'm astonished by the proposal. Because it suddenly comes to my mind that Tanya is hiding right there. Ah, shit. No. I won't be able to wait till we reach the bedroom. Helen undresses and leaves her lingerie on. Obviously, she's always very refined at choosing her clothes. Then you have to catch me. But, stop. Where are you running? Oops. I don't know where to run now. In the end, we went where you wanted to, as usual. Luckily, Tanya is not visible. She must have had enough time to find a hiding spot in the wardrobe. 
Shut up and come here. My love. Helen, you are marvelous. Thanks. Hope you get a good view, Tanya. Let's get under the blankets. We make love all night long. Surprise no I can last that, that long. Behind the wardrobe excites me in an unusual way. Is she looking at us or not? I don't care about the answer. It's knowing that she's there that makes everything so exciting. For sure, I can't go on like this. But for the moment, I think about something else. That says into voyeurism. Of course he is. <laughs> Getting into chapter three. Oh, what a great sleep. Hurry up. It's half past seven already. Ah, but Helen? She just left, but she left you a very nice message in the kitchen. And I guess you read it. What's so funny? Nothing, nothing. In any case, hurry up. You have to go to work soon. Okay, but before that, I want to talk to you for a moment. Uh, yeah, about this. <laughs> but you, last night, did you watch us? And how could I? The closet has no space. I didn't want to risk getting caught, so I didn't try to open the door at all. Not even a little bit to peep. Ah, I see. You look disappointed. It's not like she probably couldn't hear anyway. Uh, uh, not at all. Uh, I'm relieved. Anyways, Helen really has a wonderful body. Congratulations. Hmm. Thanks. I think she's been lying. I'm sure she looked at us. Yeah, anyway... Listen, do you have paranormal powers? What do you mean? At work, I saw you appearing... Like I had a vision. <laughs> it's impossible. I know. It's what I think, too. Are you sure you're not falling in love with me? With well. a robot? I really don't think so. But you're definitely having some thoughts, though. Now I'll get ready to go to work. Good. But this situation must come to an end. I already explained to you. And I don't want to know anything about you, but... Well done. I'd be sorry if I had to eliminate you. Eliminate me? Oh, yes. No. You'd never do that. <sighs> I'm going to work now. Yeah, let's go. I'm going to work now. Yeah. No. Well done. And I, but now. Are you. Listen. You. Okay. But what's so. Ah. I don't care about the. You look. What? Now. Good. I'm going to work now. Okay. Well, I was kind of hoping to go read that note that Helen left, but I guess not. Here I am, back in my office. Let's begin the usual startup procedures. Hmm, strange. Tom is not at work today. I don't see his username logged in. I hope nothing's happened to him. I hope not. Now that I think about it, I could even do some research on robot models here at Nanotech. I have access to the whole database, even if I don't know what interesting things I may find about Tanya. Mm, I don't think that would be a good idea, because they might be able to trace it back to me then. But that talk this morning... Would she actually be capable of breaking one of the three laws of robotics? Would she be capable of killing a human being? I don't know why, but I think she can. Hi! Hey Tom. Everything alright? Sorry if I called you at home. I don't feel well today. I'm sorry. Do you think you can work from home? Yes. I don't try to do something as usual. Perfect. Uh, Tom? What's up? Oh, yeah, yeah, let's apologize. I wanted to apologize for yesterday at the pub. 
for having accused you of flirting with Helen. Okay. Apology accepted. Great. Have a nice day at work, then. You too. I'll ring you. Mm, I am definitely concerned about him. I know this is not going to end well, but I am curious. I start querying the database. Interesting. Several experiments have been carried out throughout England to create bionic organisms, i.e. robots with features which are totally similar to those of human beings. But apparently, nobody is advanced as Tanya. Are you interested in bionics, Luke? <laughs> well, hello there. Of course there's uh, one crazy scientist-looking dude. Ah, uh, Professor Mark. reading all rather outdated. Big improvements have been made recently. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to try and pronounce his last name. <laughs> uh, really? Yes. But let's meet in the lab during lunch break if you want to know more about this topic. I don't have time now. Okay, I'll be there. You have enough time to stop and talk to me? I'll go back to work. Okay, well, uh, let's go to work then. Oh, boring working day. Damn it. Time never passes today. There I go. For the moment, I've finished. It's lunch break time. I can stay here in the office or go somewhere else. But I only have one hour. I can now go to Mark's laboratory if I'm interested in hearing his offer. I'm not sure about it, though. Hmm. Okay, let's go to the laboratory. Hello, Luke. Good afternoon, Professor. It's an honor for me. Forget it. Let's get straight to the point. Sure. What you see here is nothing but one of the many nanotech labs. There are many other similar ones around the world belonging to other companies. But what we are researching in here is something unique. In fact, we are carrying out a series of experiments aiming to create a real artificial human being. Wow. This explains everything. Tanya said she was a prototype. She could be one of those experiments. But how did she manage to escape from here? It's virtually impossible. Maybe she comes from some other lab. I'm pretty sure it's this one, because this background looks very familiar. I know you do not morally agree with these kind of experiments. Well, no, actually. And what if I offered you the opportunity to cooperate with me? Me? Working with you on this project? You are one of the most brilliant minds in the whole company. Your salary would be double, but you must not talk to anybody about your new job, not even to Tom or Helen. Ugh, seems like he knows many things about me. I don't like this. Well, I don't know. It's actually a great opportunity. You don't have to decide now. You can think about it until tomorrow, but then you'll have to give me an answer. Okay, I'll think about it. Maximum secrecy. There are bigger interests than you think behind this project. If you talk about it to someone, unpleasant consequences may occur. Great. It's threatening me. It doesn't depend on me, believe me. I'm just warning you. I don't want you to make the same mistake that I did. Yeah, you're still alive, so I guess that's kind of good. Uh, yeah, ask what happened to him. You were talking about a mistake before. What? You said you don't want me to make the same mistake you did. What are you talking about? It's a personal matter. As you can guess, 
I don't want to talk about it. Of course not. Uh, uh, as you wish. But how does it work exactly? You'd remain in your office normally. Another clerk will do your work undercover. Then in reality, you'd be working on my project from your office. Without ever visiting the lab? You'd have access to the lab, but only during closing time, so that nobody can see you coming down here. I see. Then I'd have to do more working hours. Sure. That's why the pay is double. Huh. Okay, well, uh, thanks for that. Okay, I don't have any other questions. Good. Let me know your decision. But now, go back upstairs. Yes. Goodbye, Mark. Have a nice day. Okay, well... Okay, because it is still my break, right? So, um, you know, we'll do probably gone, I Who guess. Who knows if Helen is even jogging today? We didn't set up an appointment, but she said she usually comes here. Ah, there she is. Helen! Ah, uh, you're here. Were you looking for me? Let's just say I was hoping to meet you. She jumps on me and puts her arms around my neck. What's up? Nothing. I just wanted to see you. Why? Ah, I thought you had something to tell me. If you're referring to our recent discussions about getting married or living together, I changed my mind. Oh? Okay, well that works out for us, I guess. What do you mean? After what happened last night. I mean, everything is so good now. I'm scared of changing things. We might change them for the worse. But... Please, try to understand me. I want us to continue meeting as we always do, but I don't want to put any pressure on you. Wow. That was exactly what I wanted. If we meet only once in a while, it'll be easier to solve Tanya's problem. Okay, I understand. You're right, after all. I'm so happy you understand. She starts kissing me all over my face. Come on, stop it. Ah, love. A policewoman? What do you want? I am very sorry for interrupting you, but I'd like to see your ID. Why? Every regular citizen has an ID containing all possible information. Health, work, marital status, anything. Obviously, only authorities have free access to this information. Here you are. And yours, miss? Helen. My name is Helen. I... I'm really sorry. I forgot it at the shop. Hmm. Following regulations, I should find you, miss. However, I know which shop you work at. Your face is not new to me. It's a nice shop with many interesting dresses. Oh, follow me then. I was about to go back there. You'll be able to check my ID card and try on any dress you may like. That sounds like a great idea. Let's go. Bye, Helen. Bye, love. Well, all I can do now is go back to the office. Okay, well, um, try not to do any dangerous, Helen. I go back to my the office, woman. and I finish my working day. Now that I'm finished, it would be a good idea if I'm the one that goes to see Helen, so that she stays away from my home, and from Tanya. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Yeah, I think I'll go to Helen. I arrive in front of the building where Helen lives. I try ringing the video phone. Helen? Helen, are you home? Who is... Uh, it's you! I yeah, just it's came me. back from the shop. That Tina is really great. Ah, uh, the policewoman? Everything alright, I hope. Yes, yeah, sure. We even may become friends. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, she may prove useful. Come up so I can tell you. Helen's flat is really small, but it has a lovely bedroom. She loves staying in there and talking. Hi, listen. It's incredible how fast she manages to talk. I'm practically dizzy after half an hour of talk. And so I finally came back home. Well, luckily. Actually, I mean, luckily she stopped talking. 
Better if you go back home now. Okay, that's kind of mean, but... Huh? What time is it? It's already nearly ten in the evening. Unless you want to stay here for the night. Ooh, I mean... Uh, if I... I mean, I don't really need to go back. <laughs> I just realized there's a teddy bear in the corner there. Um, sure, why not? Guess it won't hurt. You know, that's not a bad idea. Tomorrow morning, I can accompany you to the shop. Oh, splendid! She's clearly surprised. I rarely sleep with her in her place. If only she knew the real reason behind my decision. Good night, love. Night, my honey. Oh, nighty night. Another day starts. I accompany Helen to her shop, but I'm early for work. I have at least one hour. Okay, um, yeah, I'm gonna go back to my flat and say hi to Tanya. Tanya? Maybe she went away. Strange. Let's check in the living room. Oh, hi. Ah, there you are. But what's the I still smell her perfume on you. I mean, what do you expect? She's my girlfriend. Huh? You've been to Helen's place, right? Yes, so what? I thought you didn't like spending the night at her place. Actually, well, usually not. But this time... Uh, yeah, I did it to protect her. I, I, I did it only to protect you. Why do you lie to me? You know that I can easily understand when you do that. Okay, then. I wanted to spend a peaceful night. Are you happy now? No. I'm not happy, but forget it. Are you... jealous? Don't say idiotic things. Nonetheless. Stop it, you stupid human being, or... Oh, she comes what? close to me in a threatening way, and I don't know what to do. I'm scared, but at the same time, fascinated by her. Well, let's challenge her. I'm sure nothing will go wrong. What will you do? Will you kill me? I will. Oops. She gets closer to me and holds my arms. I try resisting, but it's useless. She's too strong. Without even realizing, I'm on the floor and she's over me. In front of her. Helpless. For a moment, I think she really wants to kill me. Instead, she loosens her grip and starts crying. I'm not bad. Believe me. Uh, believe me? I didn't kill those people. It's like she's in a trance. She says absurd sentences. As if she wasn't herself anymore. As if she was regressing to an event in the past. Ah, she got trauma. That's Calm surprising. Down. I grab her arm, but she doesn't want me to, and she pushes me away. She pushes me away with the slightest effort, sending me flying. Luckily, I land on the couch and don't get hurt. But I'm amazed by her incredible strength. I mean, she's a robot after all, so... Tanya, everything's alright. Be yourself again. I'm not a murderer. I know. Come to me. She slowly gets closer to me, almost as if it was her that should be afraid of me. Finally, hesitating, she abandons herself in my arms. She keeps crying, sighing. I didn't mean to hurt you. Forgive me. It's not your fault. It's me who should apologize to you. Unfortunately, I have to go now. It's late. Okay, but I need to tell you something. Yes, what is it? There's a specific reason why I came to you. Uh oh Because you work for Nanotech. Hmm, yes, I think I told you. So what? Who knows? Maybe in the end it has some connection to Mark's secret project. I need your help. I was created in one of Nanotech's secret labs. I managed to escape, but I'm not sure what I am exactly. What? Exactly that. It's not by chance that I'm here. But what do you want from me? What should I do exactly? I want to know who I am. Uh, I'm not sure I understand. Listen, I don't know how to explain it. 
I have blurred memories, but they don't belong to the world's recent history. What does it mean? I remember the sea, the green fields. I remember the seasons. I don't remember the rain. I was not born in this century. Ha, huh, interesting. But it's impossible. I know, and I'm going crazy over this. But now you must go. We will talk about it later. I just wanted to tell you. Because you were kind to me. See you then. Well, thanks, I guess. Wow. What a situation. Entering my office, there are a thousand questions spinning in my head. Who is Tanya, really? Is she dangerous? Is she really jealous? Will she be capable of killing me or Helen over her feelings? I really don't know what to do! Hmm, yeah. Definitely got a predicament on our hand. Okay, well, hmm, we can call Helen if we want to. I want to call Helen. I don't know why, but I believe Tanya is jealous of her, even if it seems impossible. I'd hate it if something happened to her. After all, Tanya is not as harmless as she appears to be. Luke? Hi, Helen. What a nice surprise. You never call me from the office. Yes, it's true. Did you need anything? No, I just wanted to see how it was going. Well, I've already had many customers today. Great. Are you going to the park today? I don't know. I have to see how work is going. Okay. If you have the time, please come. Don't spend too much time working. I'll do what I can. Hmm. I could go after all. At least today, Tom won't be there, since he already had his break. <laughs> okay. Don't know why you took it early. Is he avoiding me? Okay, well, I guess we're... I can't leave work now. Okay, I guess Another we're working. working day. Damn it. Time never passes today. There I go. For the moment, I've finished. It's lunch break time. I can stay here in the office or go somewhere else. But I only have one hour. Okay, yeah, let's go to... Yeah, the park. I enter Kensington Gardens virtual dome full of doubts. For sure, Helen is there waiting for me. But will Tanya be there as well? Oh, let's hi. oh no, she's here. Ooh, uh, uh, hi, Tanya. Tanya, in a jogging outfit. Sir, but dressed this way, she's really sexy. I thought of coming here today just to do something different. Uh, uh well done. But isn't it risky? You're wanted, you know. Yes, but they don't have my identikit, and their scanners don't work with me. It's enough that I'm careful. They'll never find me among all these people. I wouldn't bet on that. It's possible, but I believe you're lying. Okay then. Yes, it is risky. Even if I have uncommon capabilities, being wanted by all of London's police is no small issue. But I absolutely wanted to see this place. It's wonderful here, just like in my memories. In your memories? I told you already, didn't I? I remember a different Earth. Probably how it was before the climate catastrophe. Hmm, that's strange, though. How can you remember? Luke! And now? Oh, no. Who is she? Uh, she... I'm Tanya. His cousin. Has he ever talked to you about me? No, but I know he has no cousin. The situation is getting bad. Okay, then. Sorry if I lied to you. Believe me, we're just friends. We met here by chance. Sure, Luke told me you're a very jealous girl, but I didn't think to this extent. 
Uh, don't, don't say that. Uh, about to have a cat fight. Ah, uh, really? Then he must have also told you that I'm a kung fu black belt. Look, Helen, it's not the time. You shut up. We will discuss this later. I understand. I'll leave you alone. Good idea. <sighs> Luckily, Tiny decided to leave. I'd hate to hurt you. Luke loves you so much. Hurt me? You ugly. As I feared, Helen tries to trip Tanya, who avoids her foot with a very fast jumping move, and she positions herself behind Helen. From that position, Tanya blocks her, twisting her arm behind her back. It's not polite tripping people running. Uh oh. Uh, this isn't gonna end well. Tanya, I beg you. It's a strange sight. Tanya, holding Helen, lays her head next to hers from behind and whispers the following words in her ear. I don't want to hurt you, but you have to be kinder to me, darling. It would be a pity ruining a nice body like yours. I... I don't know why, but I'm getting aroused. Really, dude? Now is not the time. Then... Don't you want to apologize to me? I... You're hurting me! Now, isn't there something you want to tell me? Sorry! Forgive me! Luckily, Helen's pride doesn't go as far as letting someone rip her arm off. Tanya lets her go. You're a bitch! Hey, watch your manners. Damn it! Stop that, you two! Yes, in Tanya way. Tanya, go away, immediately. That's what I was doing before your woman started looking for a fight. Yeah, she was only just being a bitch, not trying to fight. I just tripped you, and you nearly broke my arm, you ass! Helen is right. I knew you were violent, but I didn't think you would reach this point. You... you really are in love with her. If you can't even see the situation with a little fairness... Ooh, well, that went down. Great. I'll try to go away again. If nobody stops me this time. Tanya walks a few steps. Then she turns around, saying to me, Look. Yes? I am sorry. You should choose your friends more carefully. Even if at least you defended me this time. Helen, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. It's late. I have to go. Tonight I'll drop by your place and you'll have to explain to me who this Tanya really is, since I don't understand it yet. Okay. Seeing what time it is, I decide to return to the office. As soon as I return to the office, I find someone visiting me. Oh great, just what we need. Good day, Luke. Yes, hi, now's not the time. Oh, hello, Professor Mark. I am pleased to see that you don't have those strange visions anymore. What are you talking about? And how does he know about that? Maybe he's talking about a few days ago, when I dreamt about Tanya here in the office. I see you are puzzled. Actually, I owe you some explanation. You should know that Nanotech's top brass have been keeping an eye on you for a long time. Oh, really? Why doesn't that surprise me? Wow. Then, when a few days ago I told Tom there might be micro-spies in the offices, it was true. I wasn't paranoid. If you check the contract you recently signed, you'll notice that we have the right to monitor anything you do or say in the offices. Yeah, I suspect as much. Don't get scared. I was quite astonished at first, too. But then I understood there was nothing wrong with it. I, just like you, had nothing to hide. Right. Luckily, I didn't say anything compromising here in the office. At least I believe so. So, did you think about my proposal? Yes, and... Hmm, do we accept it or use it? I 
Okay, well, um, let's accept it for now. Maybe we can get some more information about, uh, where Tanya came from, maybe? I decided to accept. Really? Very well. I knew I could count on you. When will I start? Today itself, if you want. Come around 6 p.m. I'll wait for you downstairs in the lab. You know the way, but don't tell anyone you're there. Pretend you're going home. Tomorrow we will assign another clerk to your regular work. But if... Tom? Don't worry for him. We will take care of that. Uh, okay then. See you later. See you later. What will they tell Tom? <sighs> this affair is quite mysterious. In any case, he's the only one I see regularly here at the office. I don't have relationships with any other clerk. It might be for the best. Time seems like it'll never pass. But finally, 6 p.m. arrives. When I go down to the lab, I wonder if I'm not making a mistake staying here instead of going home. Will Helen try coming to my place tonight? And what if I'm really late thanks to this new task? Tani will be there waiting for her. And what if she hurts her? Ah, oh, shit. I didn't really think this through, did I? Well, uh, not that we have much choice now, so... Yes? How can I help you? So, what do I have to do? Where do I start? You have absolute freedom. Anything that may help us create a totally independent bionic being is useful. For example, you can try creating a system to manage automatic regeneration for damaged metal parts through nanotechnologies or other ways. Oh, interesting. I told you that it was worth it, didn't I? Yeah, but at what cost, though? Yes. It's an incredible lab. I've never seen anything like that before. I can only reckon about the purpose and usage of some machinery. In fact, they're extremely advanced. I notice in some huge cylinders full of liquid, there are strange objects floating that seem made of human tissue. They look like human organs! I wasn't mistaken. They actually are human organs, artificially created in the lab. There are several acronyms on each cylinder. It's interesting, even if I'm against this kind of research. But I already said yes. Yeah, not like I have a choice now. I'm in too deep. I have some kind of a mental block. I can't get my prototype to work. Huh. I have some kind of a mental block. Yes? How can I... Why, well, I have a new thing to ask him. I noticed you have human organs here in the lab. Those in the cylinders? Yes. I know. Don't let them fool you. They're fake. Fake? Ah, uh, goddammit. <laughs> yes, sure. Since we build robots, they don't have to work, actually. Not like they do for the human beings. Right. How uh, silly I am. It's how very silly. In the future, maybe it will be possible. But for the moment, we're not interested in simulating a full human body in all the infernal details. It's already enough that they appear to be normal human organs. Exactly like Tanya. Thanks for the explanation, Professor. Again, I get close to those enormous glass cylinders. Let's try reasoning. Tanya may have been created this way. Now I've got it. She has a metal skeleton and organs totally identical to those of humans, but which can be regenerated in real time in case they take damage. But it's really amazing. And now they're trying to go beyond that, to find a way to regenerate the internal metal skeleton too. Hmm, okay, can I do my research now? Let's see to it to get to work. I don't want to appear like a beginner, here with one of the biggest experts in the world's science. After about an hour and several failed attempts, I managed to design the basics of a nano-robot, capable of automatically repairing metal parts. Clearly, it's just a prototype. 
but it's already something. Hey, not bad. Thanks, Professor. I see he was... I was right about you. What do you mean by he? This lapsus by the Professor is strange. Probably it's due to age. I don't think so. Hmm. Okay, well, I've tried going through all the other things, but there doesn't seem to be much left, so... You're done for today? I think so. Yes, it's quite late. I don't want to arouse suspicions in Helen. Hmm. I see. It's better keeping a low profile. Yes. Besides, you already got good results for today. Good. You can go. Thanks, Professor. See you tomorrow. Have a nice evening. Now that I think about it, what is you can go supposed to mean? Will I have to ask for his permission every time I want to go home from now on? The situation is a bit different from what I expected. Okay, let's think about something else. For example, about what awaits me when I reach home. I arrive home and... Helen is there! Well, I mean, we expected as much, and she looks pissed. <laughs> Hello, love. Sorry for the delay, but I had to work overtime. The only thing preventing me from killing you is that I'm afraid of... her. Huh? Afraid of who? What are you talking about? She's talking about me, honey. You bitch! Why didn't you just call him? I beg you. If this is a nightmare, please wake me up. Now listen to me carefully, Helen. I am not a human being. Yes, in fact, you're an idiot! Very funny. As I was saying, I am some kind of robot. But... what? Tanya lifts her t-shirt, showing her navel. So what? My stomach is flat too! Wanna see? Look inside the navel. But... what is that? Uh, what's so strange? It seems normal to me. Don't ever look, you! Please, Helen, I beg you. Okay then, but just look at the navel. If that's the point. He already saw me naked. Oh, no, don't tell her that. What? We didn't do anything. Well, and then can't you see? Damn, she has some kind of microchip in her navel? Yes, it's strange. What kind of trick is that? No trick. I told you. If you don't trust me, you can rip a piece of my face off. So you can see what's below it. Ripping a part of your face off? Hmm. It's not a bad idea. Helen, trust me. I saw her already in that condition, and it's not a pleasant sight. Fine then. Okay. You're a robot. But what the fuck are you doing here at my boyfriend's place? And above all, couldn't you have been a male? After saying that sentence, the three of us keep quiet for a few seconds. Then we start laughing. But I'm sure that Helen is angry as hell. In fact, after a few seconds, she gets serious again and asks. Alright, seriously speaking, I want explanations, and they better be good. I... I'll leave that decision to Luke, but... The best thing is that you don't know more. What? So I should be happy knowing that... Such a hottie stays at my boyfriend's place all day long? Hey, thanks. You complimented me. Now that I think about it, that jogging outfit you wore today is mine. You thief! Helen, shut up. And you, Luke? Luke, what did you decide? I'm risking a lot exposing myself like this. You know this, right? Damn it. What do I do now? Helen will want to know everything, for sure. And if I don't tell her, she's gonna torment me every time we meet. It may even be the end of our relationship. And honestly, she wouldn't be to blame at all. On the other hand, Tanya seems to be risking everything in this moment. She's revealing her true identity to Helen. But why did she do that? If she wanted, she could kill both of us. Hmm, uh-oh. What do we choose?
Yeah, I'm just gonna risk it and let her know everything, cause otherwise, yeah, Helen is not gonna be too happy if I don't tell her. She's gonna get it out of me either way, so. Tanya, I trust Helen. If you trust me, you have to trust her too. Tanya doesn't answer, but she nods her head. Nonetheless, she doesn't appear convinced by my decision. I tell Helen the whole story. Obviously, she's rather surprised. I understand, but what is going to happen now? Tanya looks in my eyes. Maybe she would like to tell me something. Maybe in private with me alone? Tanya, there's something I have to say concerning you. Mark asked me to work with him on a top secret project. What? Tanya, you are half robot and half human. Your skeleton structure is robotic, made of a metal alloy for military technology, and thus very sturdy. But the rest are human organs, and for this reason you appear to be a normal human being. Moreover, you can feel all the human's emotions, with some extras. Your senses are enormously developed, comparable to those of some animals. In order to build a similar technology, it takes advanced labs and great funds. That's all I managed to understand so far. Yes. What you say makes sense. It's incredible, but must be true. Yes, and nobody else must know this. I risk my career and my life if this information spreads. Finally, I know something more about myself. Yes, but there are still so many strange things. For example, your memories. Yeah. But maybe you'll manage to discover something more in the days to come. I remember something about a laboratory in my early days. Those are the first memories I have. As a robot, I mean. This story is crazy! I know it is. And it has nothing to do with me. Actually, yes. You, Luke, and Tom are under surveillance by nanotech spy robots. Yeah, we've already been told about that, but... What? This... this is too much. Luke, let's call the police. No, don't do it. And why not, Miss Know-It-All? Because Richard, he bribed most of the police officers, if not all of them. Of course. In this universe, the police and what not are corrupt. Are you sure? Yes. Didn't you see the TV news? I'm being sought out like I was a dangerous criminal. It was clearly Richard that asked for help from the police. Well, I will have no part in this. Helen, what are you doing? I'm going back to my house. Wait, let's try to... No! I don't feel safe anymore staying with you. And, and you lied to me. Hiding that Tanya for all this time. So until you clear things up, stay away from me. Well, that went all the way down. No, on second thought, never come near me again. Damn it! I'm sorry, but let's concentrate on our task. Once we finish this, she'll be back with you. I'm sure. Yeah, I highly doubt that. Okay, well, on to chapter four. Meanwhile, on the other side of town. Good day, Professor Mark. Oh, of course, you're still around. Hello, Mr. Richard. Any progress on the research? It's going very well, I'd say. I've asked Luke for help, as you suggested, Mr. Richard. And? Incredible. He was completely at ease. Hmm, quite strange. Yes, I can't understand how he could manage to build a working prototype in such a small amount of time, unless... Unless he already knew something about it, right? Yes, indeed. But that's not possible. He didn't study bionic engineering. I'll do some research. Thank you for letting me know. My pleasure. And what about Prototype 10? 
we're getting even better results than the previous prototypes with Julia, the new bionic woman. What? But that's not possible! That's what I was thinking too, but then I figured out what we were missing. The most important ingredient, the main element. It's the brain. The brain? Yes. The only human organ we don't know nearly enough about. Even back in the 21st century, scientists assumed that the human brain could have extrasensory powers. Cut it short. I do not have time to hear the whole history of science. Well, in practice, the already incredible powers of our prototypes can gr Cut it short. I do not have time to hear the whole history of science. And I also get the feeling that you're not maybe smart enough to understand it either, but... Well, in practice, the already incredible powers of our prototypes can greatly vary depending on which brain we install in them. That means... Yes. The brain was not an insignificant factor like we thought. Julia shares the same hardware as Tanya, yet apparently she has much greater powers. And there's no risk of rebellion? No. This time we executed the imprinting perfectly. Tanya's case still remains a mystery. It better be. Another failure, and I would have been forced to make an unpleasant decision over you, Mark. No, no, that won't be necessary. Very well. Oh, great, so we got another prototype on our hands. Gonna be like a... So, what do you want to do? Is it gonna be like a Terminator situation going on, or...? Well, for now, I'll wait here and see what you manage to learn while working in the laboratory. You have already discovered many things about me. I think in the next days you'll be able to tell me who I really was. Yes, maybe. I'm off to bed now. I'm really tired. Okay. I'll sleep here on the couch tonight. Good night. After seeing firsthand what Tanya is made of. I mean... Knowing that inside her there's that metal skeleton and those fake organs. I don't really find her attractive anymore. Oh, great. <laughs> They're gonna be losing everybody. They get morning after. I'm going to my office again. I'm nervous. I'm afraid that Mark or someone else at Nanotech is starting to suspect something is up. Maybe Helen was right. I should have called the police already and put an end to this foolish situation. I can't believe he really has corrupted every policeman in London. As soon as I enter, I have visitors. Luke, what's happening? What? What do you mean? I, I, I was just fired. Wait, what? Was that what he meant by taking care of it? Fired? Yes, and I don't know why. That's impossible. I'm starting to realize what Professor Mark meant by we'll take care of Tom. Please, Luke, you're an influential person here. Speak to someone. <laughs> Tom deserved it. Yeah, we will reassure him. We'll Tom, get to the bottom down. of it. Calm down? I was fired. And I, I should just calm down? I'll take care of it. I promise you. Yay, okay, at least his went up. Really? Yes, don't worry. Right at the moment, two robot guards enter my office. We're sorry, you need to follow us. Where? You'll see shortly. Come. Luke, please help me. I find they didn't mean, like, actual firing of a gun and not getting fired from the job. But I hope not. I, I don't know. Luke! I can't help you now. It's too late, Tom. Oh, rip to Tom. The robot guards escort him out of my office. What? 
What have I done? Why didn't I help him? Well, shit. I'm about to exit my office when. Where are you going? Oh, of course, I can't leave. Huh? I'm a lead programmer. I have free access and no fixed working hours. No, you can't leave. Sorry. What? Or is from Richard in person. Get back to work. All right. <sighs> Son of a bitch. Damn. Am I imprisoned here? What the hell is happening? Well, anything to do is work. I can exit out of the room, maybe. My office. From here, I write most of the. Okay, not really. Thought we could maybe find something to fight them off and help our friend Tom, but we can only do work. I try to work, but I can't stop thinking about Tom. I must do something. Damn it! My code is full of bugs. I can't seem to fix them. I am. About to cry. How did I get myself into this situation? I lost Helen, and now Tom. And it's all Tanya's fault. Luke, what are you? Great, you're back. Professor, I. I will be okay. Don't worry. Where, where is he? We just assigned him to another job. I don't know why, but I can tell he's lying to me. So now please, don't make me sorry that I've hired you. Okay, hey, let's ask him about Tom. Where did those robots carry Tom? To another work area. Which one? To be clear, you must forget about him. Don't attempt to make any contact. Uh, why not? This is not what I wanted. Damn. Okay, what about break? I can't concentrate. Can I have a break? Just one hour. I need to go to the park and relax myself. No way. You haven't accomplished anything this morning yet. Yeah, gee, I wonder why. Are you deaf? I just can't concentrate. That is not my concern. It's going to be a concern if I can't work in these conditions. Please, Mark. I beg you. Save your time. You... you can't be so heartless. It's... well, I'm just doing what I must. What? Tell me you want to quit. Huh? It's like the professor is trying to help me. But he's afraid to be overheard? But how is that possible if there's nobody else in here? Ah yes, the micro spies. So apparently, he's only obeying orders from someone else. Probably Richard. Okay, well let's go along with it, I guess. I'm quitting my job then. Haha, <laughs> good joke. It is not a joke. Come on, didn't you read the contract? To hell with the contract! I know, I know. I'll quit, you'll sue me, I'll go to jail. Fine! You want to end your life in jail? You need me if you want to finish the prototype. And why are you so sure? Because I managed to create a working prototype of a nano repair device in less than a few hours last time I went into your secret lab. Shut up! Okay, it's true that we need your expertise to finish our next prototype. But don't think you are untouchable. Maybe ending your life in jail doesn't scare you, but losing Helen could. You son of a bitch. Are... are you threatening me? Uh, no, he's threatening Helen. I'll tell the robot guarding your office that you're allowed to go. You'll have freedom again, but be very careful about your next move. Fine. Be careful. I okay, immediately fine. go outside, but I must think carefully about what to do next. <sighs> Son of a bitch. Oh my god, I got so many options. Ah, oh, fuck. Who do I go to? Okay, let's try going to a shop first, because 
She could be still working. Luke. Oh, yeah, she did it. Yes, I was right. Uh, hello. I, I'm very sorry, but I don't have any time now. You see, the shop is full of people. Yes, I see. Can we speak later, please? Sure, I'll call you after work. Good. Bye-bye. Bye. Wait, that's gonna be it? Helen is not home now. She has a clothes shop downtown. I can find her there. Whoop. Um, guess we're going to go say Tom then. Hmm. Tom's not answering. Wonder if he's really not at home. Or if he's just pretending not to be. I mean, why would he want to talk to us about everything? Suddenly, the door opens. Tom seems very perturbed. Luke, what the hell is going on? What do you mean? I mean, how dare you show up in front of me again? They've put bugs in my flat. What the... I don't know what happened with his uh, character there, but kind of weird. What? Tom doesn't reply, but shows me the text he just typed in his PDA. He has written, meet at the public garden in an hour. I nod my head, and he shows me yet another text. Now, let's pretend to have a fight. Well, Tom, I don't know, but I can't always protect you. Protect me? They fired me without a reason. Without a reason? Honestly, you're not such a great engineer, you know. Recently, you weren't concentrating much at work. B but that's not true. I work very hard and... What is it now? Wait, someone is calling me. Hi, Tom. You have a minute? I see that Tom attempts to block the video phone screen. Um, this is not the best time. Can I call you back? Who is that? It sounds like Helen. Um, it's no one. Never mind. It's just a wrong number. Are you sure Bullshit. about that? Get out of the way! Get off! Tom disconnects the line, but not before I can see the image. Damn you, Tom! It was Helen! Well, maybe, but... Am I stupid now? I could see her on the video phone! Okay, you wanna fight? I'm gonna fucking fight! <laughs> I knew it! Ever since that day in the park! You wanted Helen for yourself! That's why you told her those things! No, no, it's not true! You don't understand. And why would Helen be calling you now? Why would you be hiding it? And you say it's not true? Don't waste your breath denying it. This whole thing has been a setup. It's your fault we've broken up. You broken up? You mean you and Helen? You really didn't know? Honestly, no. It's not wise to direct the discussion towards the real reason, Tanya, since the guys at Nanotech are listening. I better end this discussion quickly. I'm sure you don't. Innocent Tom, the good guy, charming Helen and saving her from Big Bad Luke. Play along, okay? Nice. What a good friend you turned out to be. Ha! Huh. Well, at least you've been fired. And I'll never have to see you again. Don't bother calling me. I'm leaving. Enjoy your unemployment. Okay, well that was, uh... Interesting. Okay, well, I'm guessing we're going to the public gardens then. I decide to go to the appointment. Tom! Tom? You look strange. Is everything alright? Luke, I'm so sorry. You're sorry? Sorry for what? If this is about Helen, then I... Yes, it's about Helen. I love her, Luke. And she loves me. No. That, that, that can't be true. Helen wouldn't. She never... But she already has. And it's your fault. You drove her to it, straight into my arms. Well, shit. <laughs> it was always either work or something else first. Helen was your lowest priority. A woman like Helen deserves better. With me, she's always first. You scheming, backstabbing bastard! What did you say to convince her? I didn't say anything. It was Helen's idea. Helen's choice. She came to me. I don't believe you. I really don't care what you believe. What's more important to me is what you plan to do about Tanya. 
Oh, so he knows about her now. Ah, shit. What about Tanya? Helen told me everything. That Tanya's a robot, and that you're hiding her. Eh, uh, she shouldn't have told her that. If you come anywhere near Helen again, I swear, I'll go to the police and report Tanya. I have a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach. I can't bear to lose Helen. But even more so, I dread what will happen if Tom makes good on his word. Tanya. How could you do this to me? We were friends! That's over now. You better go home to Tanya. Remember what I've said. It's not an empty threat. This isn't over, Tom! Forget about me. And Helen. Go back to Tanya. I'm sure you'll have a wonderful relationship. But tell me first. What's it like? Sleeping with a robot. Uh, well, I wouldn't know, seeing as I haven't slept with her yet, but may still be on the table, seeing as everybody is leaving me, and I'm probably going to die soon. Nothing like being with Helen, I'm sure, but we both have first-hand experience with that. Yeah, it sounds like you want my fist in your face. I clench my fist. I want so badly to break his jaw, or his nose, or something. But that'll accomplish nothing. But it'll make me feel good, though. Besides, I don't want the police to notice us. I have to think of Tanya. I leave him, not saying a word. While I go away, I almost start crying. Tom was never like that. He appeared almost... cruel. I have no choice but to return to my work at Nanotech's office before they get suspicious. Hmm, okay, well, uh, can we just go confront Helen? <laughs> she is? Luke. Yeah, you. You've been Hello. cheating on me. I, I'm very sorry, but I don't have any time now. Can we, yeah. can we speak later? Sure. Uh, I'll Good. Okay, Bye. I guess not. Well, fuck you then. Okay, well, back to my office, back I guess. Back the office. I struggle to focus. Tom and Helen. Tom's hard words. This is really too much. Damn. It's nearly impossible to concentrate. I managed to finish my work, just barely. Finally, it's time to go home. <laughs> do I go to Helen's flat or Luke's flat? Or I could just go and finish this and go, um, report Tanya. I'll check out Helen's flat. Strange. Helen isn't home. Wonder where she is. Even her mobile phone is off. Uh, okay. But this doesn't surprise me. Guess she's at she's Luke's flat then. You. When I finally got back to my flat, Tanya was waiting by the door. How was your day at Nanotech? It was interesting. I don't feel much like talking. I feel like having a shower and going to bed. I can't get the day's events out of my head. Helen and Tom, our argument in the park, Tom's threats, it's just too much to process. Do you need a towel for your shower? Look, I've washed them. How did you know I wanted to shower? Oh right, you can read my mind. I take the towel and have a shower. Inside, I turn the water up as hot as my skin can stand it, letting the steam fog the mirrors and drip down the walls. When I dress and come out of the bathroom, Tanya is standing there, looking at me. So did Tom tell you? Or Helen? Yeah, it was Tom, unfortunately. What? They must have told you. I can feel it. They told you about the affair. It was Tom who told you. I am certain. And he could have told me all of this earlier? And you knew? When? How? I told you I can feel these things. Read the subtle messages of human bodies. You didn't tell me. I tried, but it wasn't my place to tell you. You wouldn't have believed me, remember? I tried to tell you that Helen had something to confess. She couldn't find the courage to tell you herself. So Tom told me. That backstabbing weasel I thought was my friend. This is all too much. 
I don't want to think anymore. Better yet, I don't want to think about this topic ever again. Let me take care of you. Uh... And what are you implying? Oh, I think I know what she's implying. What I really want is to be left alone. Can't your psychic powers tell you that? I... Yes, I understand. God damn it. <laughs> With that, Tanya goes to the kitchen, and I climb into bed. Despite all the stress I feel, I fall asleep quickly. I have a dream. A dream about Helen, and Tom, and Tanya. We're in the park, and we're all running. Running from something, from someone. But we don't know where we're going. Then I wake up. It's morning. The cold rain hits my window but I can still see some light outside. I go to the kitchen, and Tanya hands me my breakfast. Luke, I need you. I still need your help. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but I got my own shit to deal with. I must know who I am, and what I am. Why do I remember a different Earth? An Earth before the rain. Why do I feel like I've done so many things before? Please, don't forget about me. About our plan. Helen is gone, and Tom is gone. But I'm still here. I haven't forgotten. I promise, I'll do whatever I can to discover the truth. And why shouldn't I? I have no idea where to go from here, and what to do with my life. Nanotech, Professor Mark, Tanya... Why shouldn't I look for the truth in all this? I can't help but be angry. Tanya brought this on me. Then again, who's to say if it wasn't going to happen anyway? If I really wanted to marry Helen, wouldn't I have done it by now? The thought gives me a headache. <sighs> well, this definitely is a predicament. Um... I don't think it's really any use going to Helen, so let's go to our office. I sit down in my office chair. All around me, a weird silence. It's like if everyone went away, and I'm the only one in the building. Why did I go here? I should go to the laboratory. Maybe I still want to help Tanya, deep in my heart. But... She ruined my life. Why do I need to help her? I have nothing worthwhile left. Luke, I need you down in the laboratory. Uh, yes, I'm coming. Are you okay? Uh, yes, don't worry. Uh, let's go down to the laboratory. I follow Mark down into the laboratory, feeling more and more apprehensive with each step. He keeps casting sideways glances at me, but I can't tell what's on his mind. Luke, are you hiding something? Uh, nah, just going through a lot of shit. Uh, what? I try to feign innocence, but I can tell I'm not very convincing. After yesterday's little incident, I was worried that you might be thinking of trying to escape. Is he trying to get me to slip up, or is that an honest thought? We're always being spied on, so it's hard to tell. Yeah, I think I've got a lot more on my mind than just trying to escape at the moment. I'll say nothing's wrong for now. Doesn't need Don't know. worry, Professor. I'm fine. It certainly wasn't an easy day, but I can't let my career be ruined by other people, right? Mark smiles, clearly pleased with my response. Good answer. I am glad you think this way. Of course. We men of science don't have room for feelings. 
They only distract us from accomplishing greater things. Well said. You've captured my thoughts entirely. And we have some very great things planned for you here at Nanotech. Perhaps you'll take my place one day. <sighs> I hope not. Oh, don't say that, Professor. I still have so much to learn from people like you. That you do. Now, let's get to work. I have a difficult task today. I want you to help me finish this new prototype. He leads me to a sterile surgery table where the prototype is resting. It looks like a cute young girl with brilliant red hair and a serenely innocent face. It's sad to see her lying there like she's dead. It's also really creepy. I mean, this whole place is pretty fucking creepy, so... I'll do my best. Okay, uh... Let's examine it's the room. It's an incredible lab. I've never seen anything like that before. I can only reckon about the purpose and usage of some machinery. In fact, they're extremely advanced. Okay, yeah, let's talk to him. Yes, how can I help you? I already told you, finish this new prototype. But how do I... I'm busy, I can't always help you. I see. Sorry. Hmm. He seems rather worried. What's going on? I've never seen him so nervous before. I mean, I haven't really seen much of him, so... Okay, anyway, um... <clears throat> let's do some research then. Hmm. It looks like the prototype is already assembled. But where's the brain? I look around the laboratory. Suddenly it hits me. For all the manufactured organs we have, I've never seen an artificial brain. They must use an advanced CPU rather than the artificial organs used for the rest of the body. I can't think of anything else. Maybe I should ask Mark for advice? Okay, I guess we gotta talk to Mark again. Yes, how can I? Oh, okay, let's ask about the brain then. How exactly do you control the robots? Control? We don't. They're independent. Sorry, I know, but... I mean, there's no brain. That's the hardest test. We've tried many AI devices so far. They didn't work? The human brain is rather complex. It's difficult to emulate, don't you agree? Yes, definitely. He didn't answer me. What the hell am I supposed to do now? Something's off here. I feel as if something bad is going to happen soon. Maybe we shouldn't be sticking around then. As I look around the lab, I suddenly realize something. I've never seen an artificial brain because there aren't any. Something that complex is impossible to recreate. So they must be using real ones. Incredible. This development is nothing short of amazing. With the right treatment, a human could live for a thousand years without sickness or hunger. Professor, I understand now. You're using real human brains, aren't you? He looks surprised by my sudden exclamation but I see a faint smile on his lips. We are. That's amazing! We're like gods, aren't we? We're creating humans! We could even bring someone back from the dead if we wanted. Yes, we could. Now let's finish this prototype. Mark cuts me off curtly. It's strange that he wouldn't want to talk more. He's really in a hurry. Almost as if he wants to be the first to complete this. He carefully inserts the brain into the prototype, but he's unable to activate it. Let me check. I... Okay, as you wish. He looks reluctant to let me try, but he gives in. 
The prototype is connected to a central computer. There's a lot going on here, but I think I can figure it out. Okay, a few hours later. Where am I? Oh, well, uh, hello there. Julia, incredible. Luke, you did it. Do you know who you are, Julia? Julia Storm. Hmm. She stares at me for a moment, and I see a ray of realization spread across her face. Yes, my name is Julia Storm. The lab door bursts open, and Mark spins around, a look of terror on his face. I knew you could do it! Richard? Yes. Welcome to our elite research team. You're a rightful member now. But I didn't do... You discovered the truth yourself. Without any help from Mark. You accepted our philosophy. I heard your words. Indeed, we are like God. We create lives. New lives for a better world. Guards! Take Mark to the laboratory. W what? You, Luke, follow us. The secret door slides open slowly to reveal a long tunnel. We step into the darkness and walk in silence for a few minutes until... The tunnel has opened up into a huge room, with levels upon levels of glass cylinders neatly lined up like books stacked on a library shelf. In each of the cylinders is a human body. As you can see, I am nothing less than provident with my plans. I have collected all of the greatest minds from the last 50 years. Well, that explains, <clears throat> that explains how they got all the body parts. What? I stare at the bodies with a morbid sense of wonder. Each of these cylinders stores a complete human being. These are the greatest scientists, the most brilliant writers. The best minds in the world! We carefully preserve them in a special liquid. Eternal Dehyde, right? It was discovered in 2050, and it's hypothesized that it can preserve human cells for over a thousand years. You are correct. We have used it to preserve the greatest people from our past, so that we have a good range of brains to use on our new prototypes. And now, Mark, it's your turn. Are you ready to become immortal? Uh, are you saying that you want to use my brain for... ...robots? I... He takes an uncertain step backwards, shaking his head. No, you're all crazy. I don't want to be transformed into... into that. Mark points at Julia as if she were a wild animal. Richard sighs and shakes his head sadly, but I can see a hint of malice in his expression. Mark, you disappoint me. Your expertise is critical to our success, but your old age is catching up with you and slowing everything down for us. I need to convert you. You know this. Oh. For the reason I thought they were talking about me, not the old guy. Okay, well, uh, you can do the old guy. I don't mind. No! Mark looks like he wants to run, but two guards grab him firmly by each arm before he has the chance. Guards! Take him into the laboratory now! I watch the scene, standing by helplessly. It's not like I can do anything on my own. I'm powerless without Tanya on my side. Luke, you will oversee Mark's conversion. I don't want to lose his precious brain. Make sure everything goes well. Yes, sir. Luke, please stop. I'm sorry, Professor, but I can't help you. You... don't you care about Helen? Uh, not anymore. What does this have to do with the situation now? You care about other people, right? It depends. I don't understand. Everything's going to be ruined. What are you talking about? Come on, old man, spit it out. You don't understand. The prototypes, 
They can't be controlled. We installed the brain of a famous serial killer in the previous prototype. Oh, no. Well, that explains a lot. Previous prototype? He means Tanya. We lost control of her. She demolished the laboratory door and escaped. We don't even know where she is now, but even if we did, we couldn't stop her. Even a handful of these prototypes are capable of wiping out the human race completely. Is that what you want, Luke? I... no. What should I do? The reactor. A cold shiver runs up my spine when I realize what he means. Nanotech Central Reactor. I programmed the core routines myself, so I know it well enough to use it to trigger an explosion that can destroy all of Nanotech. I also know it well enough to know that I'll be destroyed along with it. I rush up to my office, my head pounding from the rush of adrenaline in my body. I quickly connect to the central reactor and set the atomic fusion temperature over the maximum. The alarm begins to wail, screeching in my ears. I don't care who hears it. I've locked the process so nobody can deactivate it except for me. I have only five minutes before I die. There's no use in trying to escape. I know I won't make it in time. I glance at the clock on my desk, watching the seconds tick by. I'm going to send an email to Helen and Tom. My last will and testament. My fingers race across the keyboard as I try to explain everything. What Nanotech is doing, and why I have to stop them. The vision of the screen blurs and tears begin to form in my eyes, mirroring the regret in my heart. I wish I had been better. Tom, Helen, they were right. I put work before everything else. Even the people who were closest to me. What's happening? Why is the alarm set off? Richard burst into my office, his face twisted with rage. Because in less than one minute, this whole place will explode. W what have you done? You're going to destroy us all, you fool! Turn it off! I shake my head sadly and wipe away a tear. It's too late, Richard. It can't be stopped now. It shouldn't be. Tom and Helen receive Luke's final message, a will leaving them his money and all of his possessions. He was a thrifty man, so he had managed to save up a small fortune. They managed to live comfortably with the money, but they sold his apartment. The memories that it held were too much for them to live with. The only possession of his they kept was his cat Othello. No, at least the kitty survived. They never forgot the incredible sacrifice he made for them and humanity. Despite that they had a fear and <laughs> nearly ruined my life. After I mean, Tanya discovered what happened at Nanotech, she realized that she would never learn who she was in her past life. Torn apart by the grief of losing the only man she ever loved, she disappeared into a region of acid rain, where no human could follow. There, she ended her existence. Okay, well that's kind of good, seeing as we kind of know what she is now. And that is the end. What better one than many possible endings? Play again and make a different choice under... Okay, I did get to read the rest of that, but... Yeah, that was one of the endings of Bionic Heart. But I do plan on getting a few more of these games. I definitely want to find out what the hell is going on. and Hopefully get some more lore in this game, because... I'm very invested in this.